Corral, you're on deck. John, you're up. A Child's Guide to Object-Oriented Programming. And I'm the child. No. Uh, so when I was younger, though, uh, high school in high school, this is how we used to code things. Um, this is how I did. And it's a sequence of events, right? It's a series of instructions, 10, 20, 30, 40, in a linear, in a linear way. It made a lot of sense. If you wanted to get really fancy, you might do subroutines, right? And so here's the original uh, program over here, but it goes off into these little subroutines and that's pretty cool. That made a lot of sense to me. And so I thought I was getting pretty hot shot. And then I just abandoned programming for, yeah, 20 years. Um, so while I was off doing journalism and other, other things, this new paradigm called object-oriented programming came into play. Um, and when I started getting back into programming, um, people were trying to explain it to me. And they had all these metaphors. Uh, so it could be like a car, right? It's a car, it's a yellow, it could be a yellow car or a red car. It could have four doors or two doors. Or, OK, forget the car. How about a house? It could be a house. It could have no windows. It could have a door. Or OK, try cow. Uh, see, you can have a cow. It's a female cow. It's a Jersey cow. It can moo and give milk. And if you tip it, it does something. Uh, now, you know, this whole thing, the banana, I really couldn't figure it out. And I just didn't understand it at all. And even when I started programming in object-oriented languages, still didn't get it. All right. So how many of you have played this game right here? Hands up. All right, cool, right? You, you move the little levers, you move the ball around, and it goes, you avoid the walls and you avoid the holes. So my daughter, seven-year-old, loves this game, okay? But she doesn't play it on this thing, of course, right? She plays it on this thing, which is her iPad, because it's got the accelerometer. You can actually move, it's, move the ball around, avoid the walls, avoid the holes, and go through the whole thing. But because it's an iPad, it's a computer, why stick around with just walls and holes? Let's get some Canon out there. So we got Canon over here, we got bumpers, we have fans, this blows the ball around. So she really digs this, and she plays it, cranks, a lot, cranks away at it, and she understands how all these things work. Here you have to like avoid the holes, but then you have to hit this button over here, and that button opens that gate, and, that, and then this button opens that gate, and this button opens that gate, and you can get in. Okay, so she's playing this, she understands all this, and one day she says, uh, Dad, can I push this button right here? And it says, create. And I was like, sure, I don't know what that does. Well, let's give it a shot. Turns out that if you click on that button, you get a little code, you can go to a website, and it gives you a blank board for this game. And what you have is this blank, here's the ball, here's the hole you have to get to, and then here are all of these little elements. It's kind of like Photoshop, but instead of having a tool, you actually can drag these things into here. And so here's the button, here's you know, the fan, and you can, here's the hole, and here's the walls. You can put them all out over there, right? Here are 20, I've got 20 holes up there. Um, and she knows what each one of these things does because she's been playing this game nonstop for, you know, whenever she can get a hold of the iPad. And um, she also knows that if you drag it over here, you get this little panel here. When you get it, it's got all these options, right? Uh, you can't quite see it here, but you can make this cannon either shoot um, exploding cannonballs or rubber cannonballs or how fast it goes. Here, this is actually the panel for this button right here, and she's made it so this button starts one of these going counterclockwise and the other one going counterclockwise. This button here, you have to make sure you don't fall into the jaguar's mouth. That's the whole point of that. Um, and, 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 but basically, she's triggering this button to go with, this, with, with these little wheels over here. And it occurred to me that what she's actually doing is she's object-oriented programming. If you see a cat thing here, Natalie's really into cats. Um, and she's using all of these little different objects, and, um, and the obstacles are the objects, right? And it started to make sense to me, too, that, oh, I get it. You don't have to program all six canon. You can program one cannon, use it in many different instances. So these are, these are objects canon of the canon class. Oh, I get that now, yeah. And I can change each one based on their properties, their methods, and all their actions. I really get that now. And I, I just said, you know what? Natalie, you've completely figured this out. And for that, I thank you, because I couldn't before. So thanks, Natalie. Oh, you can't see her too well. Well, that's Natalie. Anyway, thank you.